I've got it connected to a power supply. I've got it on 12 volt. I'm using this red wire for the positive and a green one for the negative. So the positive comes around, hooks to the positive side of this J19 terminal and to the positive side of the J18 terminal. Now, when you're actually using this for part of your display, you don't really want a jumper across here, they say. But it's okay to use this while you're testing. The ground then goes to the ground side of J19. That's your plus and your negative. When you first connect these up, if the factory, as it says in their operating instructions, if the factory set this uh, up to run a test program, then plug it in. The plug wire right here, as you can see, this is one of the uh, connectors that came with the kit. It plugs right into the board. The wire itself here, I bought a package of these. Uh, they weren't very much. There's 10 pairs here, negatives and positives. And they're the exact same as uh, the connectors that are on the lights. The problem is the connectors on the lights, though, have the wires as blue, white, and then red. On here, it's white, green, and red. So you want to make sure that you have them in the right order. When you connect it up to your lights, for one, with these connectors, you have to have the female end on here. Connects to the male end of the lights. I'm going to interrupt my own video for a second here to give you a piece of information I didn't have when I made the video. How to tell which end of your RGB pixel light string connects to the E682 controller. On these round lights that I bought, the pigtail ends, they already have connectors on them. Yours may not. But on that pigtail, follow it into the light itself. If it goes in on the side of the board that is marked DI for data in, then that's the end that connects to the E682. If it goes in on the back side of that board in here, then that's the wrong end. So me, I need a magnifying glass to look, but I can see that this center wire here on this one particular string, it happens to be white, it goes to the uh, post there marked DI for data in. So that would be the end that connects to the uh, E682 controller. On these square lights, once again, take a look. And you don't really need a magnifying glass for these because they've got a great big arrow on the bottom of them. And that shows which direction the data has to pass through. So if your pigtail is coming in to the arrow that's marked that it continues on through to the next light, then that's the end that marked that uh, connects to the E682. So let's get back to the other video. So we've got the female on the male connector that goes on the board. They say to put it into number three. The third group, you've got one group is first four, second group, third group, fourth group. And in the third group, the top one is one, then two, and then jumps up to three, and then four. I'm just going to plug it into number one. I'm going to connect it to this set string of uh, 50 lights here. I don't have it connected to the internet yet, but when I power it up, and you'll see the red and green come on, these will light up red. And We'll sit here and watch it for a second because the test program will send, there it goes, 
will send a pulse through it uh, chasing brighter uh, light. So we know that the board is working. Uh, I'm going to connect it to the internet now. And I'm going to switch over to uh, screen capture on my computer. Uh, so you can see what we have to do here to get it to connect to the computer. All right, the first thing the instructions tell you to do is open up your web browser. And on the web address, type in 192.168.1.206. Press enter. And if your modem your router, I mean, uses one for the uh, the part of the address there, the seventh number in the address, then it'll come up and you'll see the uh, control screen for the uh, controller. And so since it didn't, the first thing we're going to try, you can see that it's still running the program that was in it. So what first thing we're going to try is we're going to force a different address on it. Uh, now I happen to know already that the seventh number and the address for my router here is a zero. But it says zero and two are the most common. But in the instructions it tells you exactly how to go about this. But for my particular case what we're going to do is we're going to hold down the pro the program button right here and we're going to count the red and blue flashes when it gets to five I'm gonna let go and that will force the address of uh, zero in place of that one onto the board temporarily so I'm going to hold it down and start counting one, two, three, four, five. Okay, let go. And now the board has a temporary address of zero. So I'm going to change that one. To a zero. And we can see that now our pixel controller screen comes up. Right up here we have a temporary address of 192.168.0.206. Okay, so I'm going to go in here. And it already has the address here. If it's not correct, change it to yours. 192.168.0.206. We'll go over here and we'll press system update. And then we're going to go down and tell it to restart the controller. And there we go. I know it still says temporary here, but up here it's waiting for a response. I'm just going to go ahead and close it. I'm going to open it back up now. Type in the address of 192.168.0.206. Press enter. And it comes up and it no longer says temporary up here. So now this controller has been changed to this new address. Over here you can see the test pattern is on 4. That's the one that causes that blink to go through there, that chase. I'm going to change that to a 1 and update the system and you can see that that's bright red. 
Number two, update the system, is bright green. Number three, update it, is bright blue. The numbers go on quite a ways, up to around 30 something or so, uh, for all the different test patterns. But since what we're going to be doing with it uh, is running it off of Vixen, first thing I'm going to do is take the test pattern and put it on zero. Update the system. Okay. I also know that in Vixen, the Unicast E3 or E1.31 is what it'll be using to run it. I'm going to update it with that. Each time you make a change on one of these lines, each one has an update on it. You have to update each change you make. Now I'm going to go down here to the output configuration. On outputs 1 to 4, you can see that it has some other number than what I'm using for my pixel lights. Mine are the WS2811s, like it says here on number 3, which is why number 3 works. So I'm going to change these others to the 2811. Now I'm going to swoop over here, update it. I'll go to the next one, 2811, update it. Down to the bottom, 2811, and update it. Okay. Now all four of the outputs are set up for the 2811 lights. So I'm going to switch this. I'm going to pull the plug out of number three and put it over in one. And we'll just see now if the test pattern comes up again. I'll put number one, which should be the bright reds. I'll update it, and they're bright red. So now all the controllers are working on the 2811 bulbs. I'll put that back on zero because we do not want to test pattern in when we're working with Vixen. And at the moment, that's as far as we're going to go with this one. Now for my personal use, this is the second controller I've built. So I don't want it to have the same address as the first one. And the first one has this 206 address. So I'm going to change the 206 to 207. Oops. <laughs> to 207. And in order to change that address, I'm going to update the system information. And then I'm going to go down and I'm going to restart the controller. And that should lock the 207 address then into this controller. It's showing that it's waiting for a response. What it's going to end up doing is not be able to find this controller on the 206 address. So I'm not even going to wait on it. I'm just going to close it, open it back up. On my address, I'm going to type in the 192.168.0.207. And it found it. So now this one has the address of 207. My first one has the address of 206. So I know which one is which, and I'll be able to put those numbers into Vixen. So... Now we can start working with Vixen. So I'm going to shut this down just by closing the program.